area. The following is a sports narrative special presentation. Should I only be hearing in one ear? Okay, just want to make sure. And the pick is finally in. It's currently being brandished by some walkie-talkie individual taking it up to the commissioner's podium. Wow. A big, humongous pick. Now, to find out whose name is on that card, here is the commissioner. Ready to make history. I wonder what's happening. <laughs> oh, this, oh, that sound. Ugh. That's probably the prettiest sound in the whole world. That is the prettiest sound it really in the world. <laughs> it really is. Isn't it? It's, it's so unique and perfect. I love it. Welcome <laughs> to the Sports Narrative Show. I'm your host, Jeff Bowers, and we have a very, very special guest. Uh, as we have the great, the amazing, Connie the Girl Scout. Carberg? Carberg. You Carberg. got Carberg. Perfect. I mm-hmm. wanted to make sure I got the name right. Yep. Uh, as the original, the original female scout in the NFL, mm-hmm. and uh, t- tell your story because your story is fascinating. I love it. I love every part of it, <laughs> all the way back to the beginning, all okay. the way back from when all right, your Jeff. dad and all of it. Okay, I'll start with it. Always a tomboy growing up, but didn't know football because girls didn't do anything with football. Played every other sport, but then my father and my uncle, both Dr. James and Dr. Cal Nicholas, they became the two team doctors for the Titans who became the New York Jets, mm-hmm. and I was 13 years old. Well, I thought, I better learn something. So I started, I had an okay. earth science teacher in school, and I'd say after correct papers, and he would start teaching me football, and he came to the games with us, and I started learning it. Then Walt Michaels, and all the Jets were always over at our house. My father had his office connected to the house, and the players were always over, George Sauer and Namath and Boozer, and you name it, all the Super Bowl team. Amazing. And they were always, yeah, everybody, because they would be, uh, my father would examine them, bring them up for coffee and cake with my mother. (laughs) (laughs) This is back in the old, this is how it was in the old days. Of course. (laughs) Yes. And then, but I would sit and watch football a lot with Walt Michaels, who was the defensive coordinator of the Super Bowl III team. Yeah. And then he became our head coach eventually. And he taught me so much football. Then from, they were the high school senior, the Jets won the Super Bowl. They won Super Bowl, oh, oh, the guarantee, nice. the famous guarantee by Joe Namath. The number one in the oh, air, absolutely. And I was there, high school senior, no longer could kids say, what's wrong with your Jets? And it was, it was heaven. It was unbelievable. Uh, absolutely. So after that was over, I um, went to an all-girls college, played basketball. They didn't have scholarships back then for women. Right. You just went because you played and you liked it. There was no Title IX yet. Went to, transferred to the Ohio State University. Oh, wow. Best move I could have made. The Ohio State, of course. Yeah. So I, I went there. I was president of my sorority, very active, and all that kind of stuff. But I loved football. And I didn't know what to major in, so I just picked dietetics and nutrition. But, right. but it wasn't my passion. Sports were. So then uh, one day I went over to the union. Woody Hayes was Coach Hayes. Oh, yeah. He was in there with the team. They came out. I brought his book over, You In With People, and I, to have him sign it started talking to him and um he was unbelievable he said why don't you come over to the stadium and we'll talk so i did and at that time there was there was nothing for women uh it, you know it of was course, yeah. said there was no time like even phyllis george hadn't started oh, on, wow. the, on the pre-game show right, that, right, that right. hadn't on even CBS, started yet yeah. and i was in school at this time so we talked and he said but I, what i want you to do i want you to come to every practice every every day that you can talk to scouts watch learn Anything you can do, mm-hmm. you are welcome at every practice, whether it's open or closed. Wow. He, he was unbelievable to That's me. That's amazing. He was so good to me. So I did that. My sorority sisters did my work for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and so I just lived for going to practice. I graduated in 74. And then after that, I went in 74. I, um, I thought I was going to coach sports and maybe teach home ec on the side. Or at, at my old high school, my father had his 50th birthday party. Charlie Winner was there. Oh, wow. He was the head coach. Right, right. I, I went over table hopping. I sat down with him. He, he saw my passion and my love of football. He said, we're building a brand new complex in Hempstead, Long Island. Right. At Hofstra University. Yep. And he said, you know what? You love it so much. You have, would you consider working for us? I went, oh, my gosh. Amazing. I, I said, I will be there any day, any time, whatever. I mean, I'm 430 in the morning. I don't care what it is. I don't care what you pay me. And I, said, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even care because I still lived at home at oh, that yeah, time yeah, anyway. Yeah, of course. So, and I had graduated, so I did that. So I was receptionist, and at the t- I was the only woman in the whole building. Oh, wow. And that was with the players, um, you know, the players, the trainers, um, 
the, all the coaches right, and all right. those people, different, and the video people and all that kind of stuff. Because back then it was very different. It was VHS. Oh, and, yeah, and yeah. Actually, we were talking about the reel to reel. Actually, reel to reel, even. That's right, when I first started. So it was a very, very different type of thing. Yeah. So I went to work for him. And it was as a receptionist, it was great, too, because um, most people did not have assistants or secretaries. So you talked to everybody. Oh, wow. If you called and you, and you wanted to speak to Coach Perla, so you, wanted to be, yep. you spoke right with them. Amazing. And then everybody called into me, and then I would get it. So I, I got to meet so many people. Then I, and I was doing scouting and putting everything into books at the same time. I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't, <laughs> and I didn't know how to type. And I didn't know how to be a secretary. There was no YouTube. Oh, there amazing. was no any way uh, to find out how do I do the f a form letter to a general manager. Oh, my gosh. And I don't take shorthand. Right. And the coaches are telling me, here's, you got to write this letter. I didn't know what because I was Because your doing. sorority group is done all homework. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it was like. And when I when I graduated, you either went to see when you were in high school, you either went to secretarial school or right. you went to college. Right. That's. Yeah. And so we were. I so said we were typewriters with whiteout, no computers. So there was nothing to look up to say how do I do how this? How do you do this? Yeah. Then another woman got hired to be the head coach's secretary. She knew her stuff, so she would help me. And then I started learning. And I always tell the young ladies and and even and guys too. Yeah. You know when you, when you start out. Your attitude is most important. You can always be taught 100%. skills, but if you've got the attitude and they see passion and somebody believes in you, that's it. Only takes one person to believe in you. And it's so funny that in society, I feel like that's kind of been a. You've seen that come full circle. It used to be your credentials and who you were and yes. and what school you went to and all of this. And and now you're seeing even in like some of the Googles and the tech people, they're like, we don't care where you went to school. We just want to know if you care, if you're passionate, if you've got the smarts. Jeff, you're, you're so right. And it, is because everybody has you know now they have all the um, sports administration and all the different man sports right. management masters under so most people are getting their degrees internships are real important now oh, now, 100%. They, now they didn't have that of course back then of course but now they do and I said to them you know it doesn't matter what you do your internship in if it's maybe you want to be in scouting but they put you in operations or vice versa right. go do it because you don't know first of all if you like what they put you in or yeah. secondly somebody says oh I really like this person is right. their work ethic, as I said, and so I, you well, know. and you know the Eric Mangini story. That's right. He started out. With yeah, he, he was in the copy room when Bill Belichick walks in. That's what it all. And was copying plays that he had done himself. And Belichick says, "What? Oh, this is pretty cool." And you know, he said, "Well, when's your last day as an intern?" He's like, "Today." <laughs> And, it's, and that's what, and honestly, that's the way. It, that's it's and, that, it and it's that types of things. It's you know, it's opportunity, but opportunity meets. Yep. Drive and passion. Absolutely. Exactly right. And one person and one thing. And football is, it's like a, you know, a, it's, it's, a, it's a big world, but it's a small world. And one person knows somebody who knows somebody. And that's really where it all happens. One of my favorite stories about, like, getting into this whole business and the process. The first year I covered the draft, it was 10 years ago. Uh, and it was 2010. It was right, you know, right there, lockout time and all that uh, mess. Yes. Well, I uh, I had been doing stuff behind the scenes, of course. I had been a draft nerd for years, and, and I finally got a chance to go to New York with the ticket and, and go do this stuff. And I'm in New York City for the first time, and I'm walking around the city, and I'm just looking at these huge buildings, and you feel so small. Uh -huh. And and I was just like, what am I doing here? I have no business being here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to be in this room <laughs> with all these people. And then I get in there, and I get in the room, and you know I'm, I'm just taking it all in, and I start talking to people like you do. And I suddenly realize... Nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> Everybody's making it up, especially when it comes to the draft. Yes. It's a complete crapshoot. Honestly. And so I, I, was, I felt better, and I was like, you know what? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find the market inefficiency. I'm going to find the thing that these people and these people don't talk and be that in between. That's awesome. And that, so that, that's kind of where I found my niche. Isn't that things. great, though, that you saw that that early, too, when you you know, you know were able to identify what it was Absolutely. And, and figure that out? Well, and you did that as well. You, yeah. you found that little spot, and you got that opportunity. Okay, now let's okay. let's talk about your claim to fame, because you have one very important draft pick in Jets history. Yes, and that was later on. You know, I, I started in 74, as I said, and then in 75, they let me make, I was the only female still to this day to actually make a draft pick. That's amazing. But it was 17 rounds, we have to remember. I mean, yeah, but, of course. But they let me make the last draft pick. And so I took Mike Bartosik out of the Ohio State University. Right, right. Uh-oh. No way. <laughs> anyway, Did you know him at yes. the time? Yes. Okay. I mean, I, and Perfect. I, had, I mean, yeah. I'd watched him and everything, a tight end, wide receiver kind of guy. You didn't date him or anything? No, right? no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I wasn't that type at all. <laughs> so anyway, he... 
you know, and I, it's funny, I, I had confidence in my, not in myself as, uh, that way and in dating or anything else, but I always in, you know, in football is where I always felt at home. That's amazing. And so when I talked, and my husband just always, he always was so supportive all the time and oh, that's nice. all, through all the years. And he said, you know, he loved it when I would talk football because he could see I was completely at ease. And that's where I felt at home versus the other stuff. And I, I wasn't, I just wasn't good at it. No, 100%. And so talking to men about football was just something that was, I thought was just very normal. That's amazing. And so then um, after that, I was doing scouting and, and then later on, uh, Title Line had started. Then, right. then Mr. Hess, who was a great man and oh, a great owner. 100%. And, but at that time, I remember he's older and things were a little different and he said you can still grade films interview pl do interviews um go locally but he said i really don't want a woman traveling as as a representative which i you know you have to remember this 19th title nine just happened this is there's no other female scouts right. there phyllis george is just starting on t on her pre-game show there are no women trainers no women sideline there no, was still a glass ceiling yes to break and through. it was just wasn't even thought about 100%. so I, you know it's now as i as i tell a lot of again when I go speaking, I say to them, you know, I could have said, well, wait a minute, um, you know, I want to, right, I, right, I, right. I want to be, I, I, yeah. I want, I want to be doing that. But I said, number one, at the time, I, I said, I love my Jets, I love football, I am still getting to do a lot of stuff that other people aren't getting to do. Uh, it, it, this, I looked at the big picture. And, and if that I, perspective, it, I think, is so important. You know, versus this little narrow thing that and get real upset and walk out on somebody. Exactly. And I'm so glad I didn't do that because, first of all, it, it was my passion beyond belief. And how silly to walk out on a passion. But secondly, I had no idea if I had a year and a half later, what happened would not happen. And that's where, where you're alluding to, Jeff that we are coaching the senior bowl 43 years ago oh my that's, gosh, this is yes. where walt michaels was the head coach yep. my, my boss was on the road he called me and he said mike stensrud from iowa state got hurt mm -hmm. and we need a replacement can you find one for us a defensive lineman now most of your first and second round picks are already in the senior bowl like a fred smurlis was and all that kind of, of thing of course so you got to find somebody maybe rounds four to seven somewhere in there that you think might replace them well, you go through whatever you have in reel-to-reel -reel tapes. You look at um, all the reports from the National Scouting Service that you had, plus your scouts. Right. And anything else that you can talk to people about. So I finally narrowed it down to five guys. But I said, I, I really can't just One guy was, was faster, but a, f a small school. The other guys were fairly equal. Right. So, all looked about, so I said, I'm going to call them. Now, you have to remember, there are no cell phones. <laughs> yes. So you've got to find these guys. Exactly. So you try to call the schools. They have to locate them, get them on the phone, talk to each one. Most of them, and they were good guys, and they just said, well, okay, tell me more. When do I have to go to the, when do I go to the Senior Bowl? How long does it last? Right, blah, blah, exactly. blah. One person said, oh, my goodness, Senior Bowl, I'm there. Football, that's all I want out of life is to play football. Get me on the, I'm ready. I'm in shape. Get me on the next Let's plane. Let's go, yeah. I said, oh, and I like people with passion. Absolutely. Okay, I like people with attitude. And I, so I said, okay, let me go look, see who that was of the five. And it turned out to be Mark Gastineau. Amazing. Uh, okay, who ran? Amazing. He ran a four-five-five. Yep. And he went to a small school. He had gone one year to Arizona State, and he and Frank Cush didn't see eye to eye. He because Mark's a small-town boy. Right. He's a uh, cowboy at heart, and he uh, transferred, and he went to East Central Oklahoma. So that and he did his sack dances there and everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I I called him as I said brought him in. I wish I could claim that I knew he was going to be as great as he was, but I just, all I felt was the love of the game, the passion, right. sometimes the immeasurables. And that is so important, especially, and it's one of the reasons I like to come here. You know, there's a lot of guys who scout from just tape and, and they do all of this kind of stuff in a lot of these services, but I've always felt that getting down here, getting to see the guys and interact with each other, interact <sighs> with their coaches. You know, I've seen guys that are super talented. Okay, here's this is a bad story, so <laughs> here, prepare yourself. Go ahead. Um, we, a couple years ago, when Jay Samaro was a New York Jet. Oh, yeah, tight end. So we were in Dallas, and I met somebody who was his uncle or something like that, and he got in touch with us, and so we got to interview him. Yeah. And brought him on the air, and, and we, you know, I kind of started asking him some stuff, and he didn't really care about football. 
Wow. All he liked was the San Antonio Spurs. All he wanted to talk about was the Spurs. Is that right? Isn't and and so like we talked football for a bit and then we talked Spurs the whole rest of the time and Mavericks <laughs> and the rivalry and all this stuff. And we get off the air and I turn to the guys and I'm like, I don't I don't know if he likes football or if he uh, pays it to get paid. Uh huh, that's right. And Turns out that's kind of what happened. He never really put in the work. And it, no, he just I know, because we all thought out. he was going to be this big stud. And then he just he never put in the I work, know. and he just wasn't that interested. He goes on to the Titans, played for a few more years, and he's out of the uh, league. I know. And, but that's part of it, right? It is. And, and you'll see guys, you know, every year they'll see some guy that slips. And uh, In fact, even this year, there's the, the kid there out of Oregon, Kayvon Thibodeau. Yes. There's a lot of talk about is he more interested in his brand than he is football. I know, I know. Now, and he got inju uh, injuries, yep. and I, oh, there's a lot of different things that play into it versus just your height, weight, and speed. Exactly. I mean, look, you can look great on tape, but that doesn't mean, you know, look, Tim Tebow looked great in college tape, but right, that doesn't right. mean he could play. Exactly, and how it transfers and everything, too. Exactly. So there's so many of those variables. And the schemes nowadays. In the old days, oh, yeah. everybody was playing your basic 4-3. Nobody tapped out. Okay, right, nobody. Right. Can, you played every. You played all every, eleven. Every, you played all, all, 60 all minutes, yep. everybody, everybody can name the starters, the entire starters, and those guys. You know, unless once in a while they're going to come out. You have your right. fifth, your fifth defensive lineman, but you didn't have a rotations. Right. You didn't have. Um, you had what we call tweeners. Guys, it couldn't be linebackers because you needed to be 240, 245, right. and you couldn't be on the defensive line. So you, those guys that we're like now, which are valued because yeah. they're either going to be cover for coverage on, on safeties or linebackers. Back then, they weren't making it. So as, the game has changed oh. again so much. Well, and and of course we broadcast out of Dallas. A guy like Micah Parsons, who yeah. oh yeah, who did you know he kind of he like because I watched him and, and evaluated him as a linebacker, and I was like, I mean he's okay. I mean he's got good instincts, he's got good speed, but I you know he, sometimes he takes false steps and he does this type of stuff. One one guy was going through a whole draft process, and I, and somebody had sent me his spreadsheet of all of his picks yeah. and all of his evaluations, and I looked through his linebackers, and I go, dude, you forgot Micah Parsons. Like, how did you do it? And he goes, no, he's a defensive end. Wow. And I went, really? And he goes, yeah, that's his best position. Who is that man? <laughs> I <know. laughs> well, I, I talk to him all the time now because I'm like, hey, man, what do you think? Yes. But a guy like that, and, and there's a couple of kids this year out of Penn State as well yes. that are kind of those tweeners Tweener. and, um, and uh, mm -hmm. Ebuquete and uh, Lucata. Yep. And – I think both those guys have a chance to play that hybrid I, role. It's going to be very – and then also you, production. There are guys that were productive in college, and then something happens to the pros, or they weren't product, that productive. You know, they were worried about OA because he didn't yeah. make a – and then how he, well he did for the Ravens. You know, it, it's a – it is – I always say with it, – it's kind of like batting, batting in the baseball. You, where you bat 333, you're doing well. Same thing with scouting. If you basically, I say, if you do forty percent of guys right, you're doing really well. No doubt. Because even with all the stuff we have now, with all the different, you know, um, ways we can examine them, with and, and said so with YouTube, in person, on film, practice, everything else, we're still making yeah, a lot it's, of mistakes. It's still a, it's still a crapshoot. And it and is talking about the Jets. You know, uh, you look at Joe Douglas's first year in that first draft. Looking back on it now, it doesn't look so great. Obviously, there was the news that Cameron Clark had to retire. Uh, uh, that came out today. He I, said, didn't he, I didn't hear that. Yeah, he, he basically said he's, he, there's a chance of paralysis with the neck injury, and he wow. said he's going to have to walk away. And, I, you know, I know it breaks his heart because that was a guy who J.D. loved and obviously was from his part of the world and, and all of that. So, so there's things like that that happen. Yes. There's drafting for a different scheme. So yes. guys like Denzel Mims. Very, a guy that's going to be your straight Baylor wide receiver right. versus what you want right now that are very exact and running routes. Yeah, the Debo Samuels, <laughs> the, the, little, the little guys, right? And what Barrios did this year was amazing. Uh, oh, and, and I, am, I love to be – see, I, I, <laughs> fo I followed him at University of Miami. Yes. I love Braxton to death. And then when he went to New England, I went, oh, no. And then we got him. And – Yep. He did so much for us, you know. Again, intangibles. Besides, first time being a kick returner, he makes all. He makes all pro. And he's even though, amazing. You know, at it, yeah. and uh, and never worry. I don't want to ever jinx him, but I never worry with him as a punt returner. Right. He's got always. Oh, he's got the the sure hands. Yep. Yeah. And you know that's what they always and said is, well, he's not going to make big plays, but he's got the sure hands. <laughs> and then he starts making big plays. Big and plays. You're like, I know. Absolutely. And you know, until the last game, he really was the only guy that really stayed healthy the whole year. Oh yeah. You know, and that, and he has good, he contested catches, and he's just he's tough as nails. So I am, I'm a huge Braxton, and and then I just he's just the kind of guy you need around. We, Absolutely, you really do, like a, like a Wayne Corbett type. 
and that's the thing about like you know we talk about that locker room locker yes. room cohesion and all of that matters so much and you know you look at a team like even with the rams you know they kind of went out and got all these superstars and brought yeah. in all these guys but unless it meshes and it didn't mesh for them early no but in, until it all kind of comes together that's when you know you've got something but but you know, and that's interesting. Like, okay, so let's go back to like the the sack exchange guys. You know, yes. they all kind of come in together, and they all worked so great as a group. Was that a guy that? Because I mean, those are some pretty wild personalities oh, between uh, Marty uh, and and Mark and all all, of the guys. all different. Because you had and you also had you know you drafted Klecko and I forget like a sixth round or yep. something, and he was a truck driver. And he was and he was lying to the school because he was playing part time at Temple <laughs> and he had, and he was playing in a, uh, an amateur league. Right, and, right. And now you couldn't do those kind no, of things. No. And then you had uh, Larry Falk, who became Abdul Salam yep. from Kent State. Yep. Steady, great, oh, great guy too. Oh, yeah. So you had these four guys, and you had an extra person, whether it was Pillars or Kenny Neal or different. Yeah, but you didn't have like you know we only had about really six guys. Right. Uh, Barry Bennett was there for a while, so you had different guys, but those main four cog, and and they had what 66 sacks in one oh, year. Yeah. They, they were they were really amazing. And then we had you know Greg Buttle at line. We had a I always tell fans look at 1976-77. Yep. Those two drafts, Mike Holovac, my boss, did. And that was without pre-draft physicals, without the combine, without a lot of different things. He was a great judge of talent. And we came away with the Wesley Walkers and the Marvin yes, Powells. Absolutely. And, I mean, a lot of people might not know who they were. But if you look back if on all that. Uh, Cl right, Klecko and Abdul Salam and Dan Alexander, who was a great offense. Oh, he was yeah. a defensive lineman at LSU. We switched him to offensive Amazing. line. And he, pl and he played there. We had Matt Robinson, Richard Todd, yep. um, uh, Schaefer Suggs, as I said. We had, so we had so many guys in those two drafts that were the basis of the team that eventually in 80, when Walt was coaching in 81, uh, then like we kept Bobby Jackson in, you know, in, um, in 78. And yep. then, of course, we got, then we got in 79. And we also free agents. We got Brucey Harper oh, yeah. and Clark oh, Gaines yeah. as running, yeah. and Clark Gaines and yep. running backs. It was a very uh, um, interesting group, and Walt was a great coach. He was just, he was the kind of guy that just do your business, and whatever else you do is okay. You know, I, he, didn't, um, he wasn't a believer that you have to have meetings to have meetings. Yeah, and, and that's <laughs> one of the things I really appreciate, too, is, is, you know, you have a lot of coaches, especially now, and especially with the, the uber smart guys that yeah. are, you know, that get hired, and the Yale guys. I mean, we just had Garrett up there in, in Dallas for a while, and <laughs> I feel like they, they overthink the game. You yes. know, there's a certain amount that, that is – you know, look, it's just football. Like yeah, it's, it's, keep it's it simple, stupid, right? The, yes. Exactly. <laughs> and, and the one thing I, I, I heard Mark Schlereth say this on the radio one time. He yeah. says, football is making a giant man move against his will. <laughs> isn't that good? I, that is all what that's all football is. Isn't that is. great? I like Mar. He does a great job. But yeah. I like, but I, it is. It comes down to you know, blocking and tackling. And, of course, now since the CBA, things have changed where you don't have yeah. two-a-day practices. You and barely have and, any and practices. You watch, I, I used to be able to I know. I used to be able to go like Chad Cascadden. I picked him out, and he always laughs about, by watching him on special teams. But now they run down, and then they hit like a little, yeah, you know, a dummy. Yeah. And I understand it's for safety and all this stuff. But still, football, I see more injuries, I think, I believe, now than I did when they p were playing back in our, I mean, my day. You, you know, you, and, of course, you didn't see torn pecs. I actually didn't lift right. weights the way they did now. But yeah. They, I, I don't know why. I'm glad they're doing a study on why there are so many ACLs. Are they getting too big? Are they, you know, why there's so many Achilles? Why there's so many lower leg injuries now? And, you know, back in the old days, you could close line. You could, oh, I mean, yeah. you couldn't go over. Like they say, why are quarterbacks doing so well? And between RPOs, which is more like college, right. but players, the, the middle of the field is now open. In the old days, Ronnie Lott and Steve oh, yeah. Atwater, no John Lynch. You, you name it. Those guys coming, which Tatum, those, yep. you know, all those guys would just be taking your head off. Yep. Quarterbacks could be hit. Poor Namath got hit oh, yes. all over Crushed. the place. Yeah. And wide receivers could be hit all the way down. So it is a different game. You know, so when you judge it, it when people try to compare back then, you really can't. It's very just a different game. It's, I mean, I love it, but it's just a different game. So you said that... Uh you mentioned Namath, and I want uh, to go back to him coming to the house and having cake and tea. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't seem like a thing he would do. But yeah. Joe was uh, one of the greatest people always, you know, with me. Joe, and with young people, you know, a lot of times people wanted him for different, you know, to do things for him. Yep. But with kids, he, he was so always there for them. 
always great to me. I used to bake up apple pies oh, and amazing. at the at the complex. It was very it was very loose back then. Yeah, you could, and Joe was just. I mean, as I said, to this day, Joe is like one of my cl really close oh, friends amazing. and just a, gr a great human being. And took part in my book and took part in. Oh, amazing. An NFL film thing, which I didn't even ask him to do, and he's just that kind of human being. That's amazing. And he's well, a very plug loyal. Plug the book since you said it already. Okay, yeah, a couple of years ago, a young lady got in touch with me, Elizabeth Meineke, mm -hmm. and I've had people approach me before, but I, you know, there's so many negative books in this world Absolutely. and different things. It's tell-all or whatever it may be. Right. She had the same philosophy that I do. I'm a pretty positive person. I love people, and I've had a lot of great experiences. I've had a lot of great male mentors. And so she got it. So she came out and she spent days with me at Gastineau's house he, with, with he and his wife and, yeah. and us and going to training camp. And the Jets, the Jets were amazing. Just like they were the first with pr bringing players in for pre-draft physicals, they were the first to have a female scout. They had a female owner, Mrs. Helen Dillon yep. Springborn. Yeah. Yep. Then they they had Donna Ponte worked there. They had Jackie Davis. And they've had, they've done a lot of different things with all all different with women. So I, I got to give the Jets, a, you know, a, a lot of a lot of credit. 100%. So, so uh, Elizabeth came out. We we wrote the book. It's on Amazon. It's called X's and O's. Don't mean I love you. <laughs> and so Amazing. it's just my story. And as I said, is it's a positive one. It's one that I uh, that I've been very blessed with, and uh, I'm, awesome. I'm very proud of. That's awesome. That's that's great. Um, so Connie, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, you in telling your story. You know, you live through these amazing times. You know, yeah. you live through the '60s and obviously the Super Bowl that happens there, and all the all the turmoil that was happening then, and then through the '70s and and mm -hmm. as, as you said, you know, with with women's rights and all of that, and and that, and then you kind of being in the middle of that and also doing your own thing, uh, kind of separately but together, yeah. and and then you know, graduating into the '80s and the way that football then exploded and and became the national pastime. Yes, and, and on all of this this thing. When you look at things historically from then, and then I guess kind of comparing it to now and where we are now, like, uh, I would just say, like, how fascinating that whole journey is. And do you see the parallels or, or what feels different maybe now? Wow. I, 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 I could never see what it is right now compared, you know, if I'm looking back, if I was back then, I, it was, as I said, it was a totally different world. It was very, rela as I said, very relaxed, um, very different um, in, in so many different ways, but you know, times change. I have to get with them. So I'm still an old fashioned. I, I still love the old. I, too, I, I still fine. love the the hits. I still I, I can't help it. I, yes. Just the way I am. I know, I know we have to be careful with concussions and all that stuff, but I, I do miss that part of the game. And a certain you know, guys that play football, it's a great. It's a certain outlet. It takes a certain type, and it you know, we used to call it organized mayhem, right? Right. And that's what, and so you can't take a guy that's just a little shrinking violet and not let him, you know, because he's not going to play football. Right. So these guys, and so, and I said, I don't know, it's probably less concussions, but all the other injuries are what I'm worried about because they're not in foot, they don't get in football shape. Right. But watching all through the thing with the women, and Amy Trask is one of my heroes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, her book, again, is, is a fabulous book. And I just love her attitude. And she she gets asked, too, you know, if you, know, if you were a woman, do you think you were being tested? They ask her that. Right, and, right. As a, and, and she said, you know, I never thought about it. And if I was, you know, we all get tested in life. I loved her answer. She said, we all get tested in life, in everything, exactly. men, men, or, you know, men and women. And so she said, what are you supposed to do when you get tested? pass the test exactly and i thought what a great thing amy and um as i said she she's just one of my real heroes because she has that kind of an attitude and here she is work al davis yeah i mean it, you know wow yeah exactly that, that kind of thing so where it has come so many people and just back in my day women really didn't like they are right. so be really into the sport Right. And really learning it. And now, of course, there's flag football, tackle football. So women really are playing the sport. And you've got people like Lori Locust from yep. Tampa Bay. And, you know, and you have Callie Bronson now, a chief of staff over at the Browns. And she was an intern with the Jets in scouting. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Wow, amazing. Oh, right. You're good. Nope, you're good. And so she was, um, yeah, she was an intern, and Colette Smith was the first African-American um, when Todd Bowles was there, and she was um, an intern in, in coaching. She was, like, the first African-American coach, and the Jets had that. I said, so we've done all, there's been a lot of different. That's amazing. A lot of different things, but I would never have seen it going there. You know, I never thought about it because right. I, I kind of lived in my own bubble. Yeah. And just loved 
every day and knowing the players and, and going to games. It was, it, it became, and to this day, football is my life. And, you know, as I said, I was lucky. I had a husband that understood it. My son, <laughs> my, my son, my stepdaughter, all their families, they all love it. They're all Jet fans, thank goodness. That's good. <laughs> and so it's been, and then coming here to the Senior Bowl, it's 100%. been, uh, this is really amazing. You're 43 years later after Mark Gastineau. That's something. That is something. Um, so, uh, you know, I have to say, okay, let's nerd out about some Jets some more. The, yeah. In 98, I thought that was our year. I uh, thought it was going to uh, happen. And the, the freak game with the Broncos and all the, the crazy, you know, the, the kickoff that went weird and all of that. I thought Parcells was going to get that Super Bowl. And and I think, honestly, if if not for Terrell Davis, I think they do. I think they go on and they beat the Falcons and they win that Super Bowl. It, I think so, too. I mean, it was – you know, we've had a couple of things like that. The 82 with Walt Michaels. Oh, yes, Because the Mud Bowl when Don Shula didn't put the tarp down yeah. and he knew we had a faster he team. Knew. With Freeman McNeil and, and uh, Wesley Walker. Nobody could stop Wesley. And uh, Lamb Jones and, and Brucey Harper and yep. all those guys. That that was close there, like you said. And then, it, you know, 98, of course, yep. you know, that was a, you know, it looked like it really was. And here you are winning at halftime. Oh, yeah. and, and Parcells really turned that, you know, the culture around that way. And then even when, when, when Rex was there. And then, it, it, you know, the 2000, from 98 to 2011, the Jets People forget we went to the playoffs like seven or eight times exactly. of those years. I mean, we were, I, when Herm Edwards was there yep. and Chad Pennington, who I adored, one of the smartest quarterbacks ever. If he if his arm didn't get all those Destroyed, injured shoulders, because yeah. he's one of the best, and I, I I think he's I always loved Chad. But he every time he was healthy, three times he took us to the playoffs yep. as well. And then, you know. We, um, you know, Favre comes in, we almost, and then he has, and, the, and he gets the injury, right? That year looked good. They, I thought that year they should have benched him. Uh, yeah, I know. It's, it's I a, think if they benched Favre after the Broncos game when he's obviously injured, yep. and, and look, I mean. I don't, I, yeah, I don't, and I wasn't there at the time, and my, uh, my, my uncle was no longer, so I don't know what, you know, I don't know what, what actually transpired, why, you know, why I happened. mean, he wanted to play through, and I, I think I they know. were so happy to have him, but. I honestly think if you had a coach who had the stones to say, I know I'm sitting you down, bud. You're, you're not. You're not. He or go get healthy. We'll come bring you back. All of I, that. I, yes, thing. exactly. What I think. Mm -hmm. I think they would have won it all. Yeah. I think that team was absolutely. Stacked. Wasn't it? Oh, when you look back, I said, and th all those players in those couple of years with Mangini and Tannenbaum. And their drafts, they had a couple, you know, yep. and when we got Brick, DeBrick oh, Shaw. Yeah. Now, oh, here, that, that and we got, we got a guy for 10 years. These guys, yeah. DeBrick and Mangold, they don't get hurt. Nope. They don't miss practices. They're, they were the, just the uh, cornerstones. Yep. We, and we had, t we had, oh, I just want to think back on it. Then you go back, then you go to 2009 and 10 with Rex, and you see that Thomas Jones and the San Antonio Holmes and, the, and our offensive line was yes. like, I mean, oh my, uh, I just can't even think with Damian Woody. And yep. I mean, I, you, you name, I mean, there's just so many guys to name in those, in those years. And, and we had the can't wait game. Yep. With Bart Scott, and then the next week, defense doesn't show up for the first yeah, half, for and then yep. then the offense is really Mark. If we had just ran out of time, yep, exactly. I think they. I think if you added two more minutes to that game, they win it. Because Mark was really, uh, you know, uh, Mark was really a good quarterback, and especially when he played loose in the beginning. And I, I, my high school, I had a woman basketball coach, and she used to use this expression, he who hesitates is guarded in yes. basketball. And in football, I think the same thing. When you start thinking too much yep. and you uh, are just hold the ball yep. just that split second longer. We it's saw it, it. We just saw it last week even with Mahomes. Absolutely. Okay, that can happen to anybody. And you're just waiting a little bit too long. And when I think when, after with Sanchez, when that started, and we lost some – really key players like Kotchery and Brad Smith eventually. Yep. Those guys that were great key guys and locker room guys and then things start, you know, yeah. falling apart yeah. that yeah. way. And I mean that's the way it goes, right? Yes. Like you, you, you rise and exactly. fall and when, when you get the opportunity you've you got gotta, to capitalize. Because you, you, you never know what's you gonna never happen. Know. You know? Exactly. And that's that's how you go until you know, you know and we had Re Revis. I mean how you didn't have to worry about half the field. <laughs> oh, when man. you have Darrell Revis, yep. that guy was so amazing. Well I, and Cromarty on the other side. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. And oh, they were. Oh, I just mean, like I said, that was. That was and a Jim, very and then Jim Leonard. Yep. And when he got hurt, the team that really hurt the team badly. And he was such a great. I mean, you know, he's the defensive coordinator. Yeah, he's doing. A, I know. He, I've heard he's in line for a lot of jobs. I would think he would be. He is really good. And you know, that was a guy. Like Rex said, that he brought a couple of people. He brought Bart Scott with him. Yep. He brought Re and he brought Jim Leonard with him. 
because they knew his system. Yes. Could could bring it all together. So we there were some really um, we've had some good years. It's just been the last ten. Yeah, exactly. And the one year we looked again, like we were going to go to the playoffs. Yeah, and with every, Patrick, yep. And everybody said, "Oh, we got this game won." Yep. And I said, "Don't say that. You never say that. Especially, it. you know, Rex wants to get even with us." Exactly. After that. Yep. So we go up there. And Fitzpatrick, oh and, oh, and everything just falls apart. You know, in it, it, you know, you talked about playing loose and whatever, and I always said that about Geno Smith. I always said Geno Smith, between the 20s, is the best quarterback <laughs> in football. He can spin it. He can make all the throws you would want. But you get in the red zone, See? and his brain just goes away. And I always said what you need is a backup quarterback that you, you put just bring in. in all the lefties. Yeah, I love it. A relief pitcher. Bring in, bring in the red zone quarterback. <laughs> you know, hell, you could put Tebow in there and done that. He's that's, great in the red zone. Isn't, so. that, tr isn't that true? Like, yeah. I, I mean, you know. Isn't that, that I, you know, it's, it's, it's so funny, too. Okay, so this is something you would know about because football is so the conventional thinking. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's always about um, – you know, well, this is the way you win, and this team just won this way, so let's copy everything they're doing, and, and just that conventional way of winning, and then you see, you know, it's the innovators, it's the people that go outside the box yes. and and can do something different. Um, you know, uh, what the, uh, oh, what's his name, the Chargers now head coach, but he was the defensive coordinator. Oh, Staley? Yeah, yeah. Bruce, yeah. yeah Brandon Staley. He had this crazy system where he said, I'm going to take my best player and put him right dead center of the field, and I'm going to play everybody else on the outside and make you throw against him. I'm going to make you beat Jalen Ramsey. Uh -huh. And it worked. And, I mean, they were fantastic. Obviously, it didn't, you know, they, he got hurt and, you know, yep, that type I, of thing. But then he brings that same system to the Chargers. It doesn't But if you don't have the well. – right, you, don't have the per you have to have the personnel. And, you know, it, it, it's a combination, right? Great coach. And great personnel yep. and players that believe in the coach. And, you know, it seems, you know, the biggest thing is being coordinator doesn't mean you're going to be a great coach, that head coach. True. And it means you have to be who you are to so many, as we see from the Belichick tree or some, uh, everybody wants to be Bill Belichick. Right. But instead of just being themselves. And if they were themselves and the players can see through things, oh, yeah. they, they know who they have faith in. And believe in, you know, like a Mike Tomlin. Yeah. He's Mike Tomlin is always he's, Mike he's Tomlin. Great, he's oh, he, he's so cool, you know. And that's what you ha that's what you have to be as a. And you know, one of the things I think about the Belichick thing, and I actually want to get your opinion on this too, is so many of those guys. I mean, you know, the Patriots are guarded, right? Like you don't. No, get, no. I, I talked to the Jet sideline reporter because he's from Dallas. Yeah. Uh, Ian Fitzsimmons. Yeah. And uh, one day he said he had wandered behind the Patriots bench. Because, uh, like, there's something had happened. There was an injury, and so he had, he would walked over there to try to kind of see. And he said two big guys came over there and said, what are you doing here? Get out I, of that's, here. That's all. Uh, and, and, I mean, there's such – so so what happens is those coaches come out of this very guarded system. Yes. And they don't know anybody. No. And, you know, it, it you got to have a staff. Like, you got to have people you trust. And, and, you know, it's one of the things I think Sala has done so well in bringing in Greg Knapp. And, oh, and that was so – yeah, that was so sad when he passed. I know. Oh, just I so know. Heart, and then, heartbreaking. And then Ulbrich and, and all of that. Yes. Of like all. bringing in those guys that you trust. That he tr – and and mm -hmm. like I said, with with Nap li leaving, I think that really hurt the offense. I think really so too, because the, the way it happened so suddenly and and exactly. fast and everything. Yeah, I I do. But it is it's so important to have people around you. And then when you're also when you're a head coach, you have to know how to handle the press. Yep. You got to be a you know psychologist helping players with all different things. You know, instead of just when it's your own specific guys and you're just dealing with that little area. Yeah. And there's so many coaches now. And the, I said Super Bowl team had a head coach and. And two assistants on offense and two assistants on defense. <laughs> and and now every team has like 20 oh, yeah, and an inside linebacker and, and <laughs> inside linebacker, outside linebacker, yep. inside this, outside exactly. that. You know, so it's very – I said, I don't know how they can all get together. I said, um, I mean, it's it's not easy oh, to get – it was people. great to see Leon Washington out oh, there working oh, with the special teams. I, I love, love – I yeah. you know, fans – there's certain players that fans – love forever yes okay leon was one of them and, and when he got injured people oh. just really fell apart so happy that, On he, that awful dirt field in oakland too oh, my and, goodness and he's and i was so happy when they brought him and, and got him here yep. you know um the, another player of course is Bilal powell yes and yes. you know he wasn't always utilized in the past and sometimes no it bothered me the last year or two yep um, love Bilal class. I would if I I would take him somehow and get you know get him in somewhere <laughs> because I just you know there's certain I said and fans just identify with certain people that they will 
just love forever. Well, Wes- like Wesley said, Walker is exactly. that way. I was going to say Braxton Berrios. Braxton Berrios, yes. That, yes. That everybody loves. And it's funny, there's a girl on Twitter who every morning she posts. Oh, Chris, Chris, yes. Chris, uh, 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 I just Chris, got my coffee just, and please sign Braxton Berrios. <laughs> I love it. She's a great, and she is a true Jet fan, love and it. she really knows her sports. That's amazing. Uh, been around for a long time. I met, you know, I met her way back. Oh, nice. You know, and she's such uh, a great young lady who just, uh, I mean, she just lives and dies. Like, I feel her passion all yeah. the time. And, you know, that's for me, it's one of the things I love about, you know, being a fan. And, and it's something that I think in, in the football business and, and, you know, in sports business or whatever, it becomes so analytical and you deal with it all the time. It's very easy to get kind of cold hearted. And, yes. And like you, you know, whatever. And, and for me, like. I'm super football analyst, and I watch the game, and I'm like, I'm doing the same thing, you know, like the Tony Romo trick. I'm like, dude, that's not hard. Like, okay, I know where this play is going. I guess this, 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 right? And so, you know, we've done like where we'll just call a game, and we're on YouTube or whatever, and and it's, you know, like I said, it's not hard. But what's great for me is because I'm such a passionate Jets fan, when I watch a Jets game, all of that goes out the window. Isn't it true? Uh, I live and die on every play. Uh, You're up screaming. You're oh, I know. Chest pumping, oh, I want to. I listen to the after. You know, I, I get the. Uh, I'm in Florida. I live in Florida now, so yeah. I'm, but I, so I have to get all the after game and yep. listen listen to Buttle on the after game and yep, whatever yep. whatever I can find. I wish I got the uh, net, yes network because I don't get that. But you know, I try to find anything that I can to because yes. you, you do. You live and die with it, and then when you meet a few players and you find out that these guys are such really you know great guys. Yeah. And and human beings and and everything else and you can't help but root for them. Absolutely. When, when that happens and stuff. So um, that's why I enjoy when I go up in training camp. Of course, this past year you had to be 30 feet away from everybody. Uh, <laughs> so it yeah. made it a little more. But yeah. I, but Leon came. You know, I got to see Leon, so I was oh, so happy. Good. And then the players and and uh, you know, as I said, it's it's. Um, I'm really hoping this whole off season for Zach is yes. really good. You know, I'm sure he'll he'll have to build his body up a little stronger. Well, I was going to say, let's talk about the current team yeah. and, and what they're going to do this off season. Because you know, I think what you saw for me was Zach came in and he was trying to play hero ball and he was trying to play like he did at BYU, where he can run around and just sling it and do his thing. And you want that? You want to keep that ability. But even Pat Mahomes oh, you, exactly. struggled. We, we, we just him. saw it this past week. Exactly. When he didn't run the offense, when he tried to do too much, then it, it just all went south on him. And so, oh, yeah, we're good. Then, So then, you know, you kind of turn that around with, you know, then he learned and he got to watch, you know, Mike yes. White and he got to watch Joe Flacco and he came back and he learned to run the offense. And then you see what San Francisco did and, and like, that's the model, yep. right, of – uh, a good defense where you can't name their two starting corners. I know, I know. and that's okay. Like that's because exactly. of the way they play that zone scheme, and, but it's all about that pass rush, and you yes. got to build. But that see, up. you have to have a pass rush. You have to exactly. have an Armstead. You have to have a Bosa. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. we've got. That's what we have to get. And we've got. You know, you got Carl Lawson. Hopefully, they find if he can come else. back. Right. That you, so that the scheme will work. Right. If you have those guys, yes. you know. Uh, yeah, we've made some strides, and this this year's dr- this past draft was looks like it was really excellent. Yes. The kind of the kind of kid, and the player that have come through. Yeah. Uh, so uh, hopefully now, you know, because it takes a while. It's and it was such a different type of type of scheme exactly. than what we had before, and everybody's getting on this. Everybody was first year, you know, yeah. first year this, and, first year and that. It's funny as uh, watching it practice, and I've talked to several of the players that were under the J- the Jets coaching. And, you know, the offensive line to the defensive players. And, and I'm saying, how different is the scheme? And they're like, it's night and day. You know, it's, ah. it's because you watch. Uh, so, like yesterday, Vernon Vernon McKinley, the uh, safety from Oregon. Yeah. I really like the kid. Yeah. So, he just showed up. He didn't have any prep time. Like, he was a fill-in. Yeah. So, he shows up. Uh, and every play, the other Baylor safety, JT Woods, was telling him what to do. Isn't that cool? And he was, he was like, hey, you go here and you've got this guy and, and you've got this, this, you know, you've got the flat, you've got whatever. And you watch him doing it, right? And you can see, like, the players, you know, learning to open up and drop into that zone and keep their, you know, keep their eyes forward and all of this stuff. And so I think it's going to be infinitely better. I think the the flub because the great part of the defense is when it works, man, it is really nice. Yes. But if you drop something, if you drop a, if you flub, if you try to do too much and you run into the wrong zone, then somebody's wide open. They're running down the field. I agree. And you look like an idiot. Exactly. Exactly. So I think this, I'm so glad you know that so they kept they they kept everybody intact. Yep. You know because we're, we're constantly changing. It's so nice for a year to ha- not to have big changes yes. that kind of thing. And you know the hard part for I, I understood with Zach very well too because. Nowadays, it used to, in the old days, it used to be 
can we get the quarterback under center? Mm Mm-hmm. He's got to do the three, five, seven drop. He's got to be able to take a hit in the mouth. <laughs> and he's got to be able to make a pass while he's being hit in the mouth, going backwards, that kind of thing. Okay, so he's got to be, read progressions. Yep. You, know, you're, you know, your typical Matt Stafford kind of thing, yep. you know, Tom Brady, that kind of stuff. All right, in the past, ever since we started with the RPOs and all, and bringing more college offenses into the pro offense, now it's, okay, wait, now when you're looking at the quarterback, is first question, can he extend a play? Yep. Okay. Can he throw off a pl- off platform? Right. Can he make uh, these underhanded backwards throws? <laughs> I mean, all, you know, and most of the time he's in shotgun now. Anyways, right. now you know, as Namath said, he never was in shotgun his whole life. Wow. That's okay. Amazing. Now they're like shotgun sick by yeah. fifty, sixty percent. But so, I think what happens is too, you you build a kid up or you you draft them for that reason. Yeah. And that's all they talked about was his on his pro day was that unbelievable oh, throwing yeah. day. Yeah. So now you bring him in for that, and you're constantly told you're good at something. Oh, yeah. And that's what you got. So now you come in. So you, you even though I when I was there at training camp, they worked with him so hard yeah. in the pocket. Everything was in the pocket, all every single day. And yet we still all talked about the extending right. of the play. Yep. So I think. It's just natural. That's the part that he still feels confident in. Yep. Okay, it's like whatever you feel confident in in life, you you want to do. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and, and you know, I think uh, out here, Malik Willis is one of those guys. Yes. That, you know, he you see him, and and in fact, uh, they were talking about it yesterday, where every time it breaks down, the second his first read's not open, he's, he's bailing out to his right, right, and he wants to take off and run. And look, he's great at running. Oh yes. But even Lamar Jackson, even it just Lamar, doesn't they, work. No, because they've now figured these different things out. Exactly. You know, they they figure out. The guys are always just trying to bomb away, you know, bomb away. Now they're, you, you know, they're keeping everybody just right in front. Not the defensive ends aren't running, running, yeah, rushing exactly. behind them, so that he, that like Mahomes doesn't didn't have that lane to step yep. up. Oh, and you should have seen, so this year. The Ravens played the Dolphins, and, yes. and, and with Brian Flores, which Uh-oh. we're going to get to in just a minute. Oh, oh dear! <laughs> but they were playing this defense. It was at the end of the game. They were playing a defense where they had seven guys straight across the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Right? And then they had four guys about 10, 15 yards back. And that was it. That was the whole defense. There wasn't anybody in the middle of the field. Wow. And every play, at least at least. Oh, I remember that now. Yeah, I remember that. And I'm screaming at the TV, throw a slant route. Like, if you had one guy (laughs) run to the middle and throw the slant, he's gone. That's so funny. And they never did. They kept throwing outs. They kept trying to throw deep. And that's uh, the Dolphins were just sitting on it. I know. And and they they had the pressure coming right. And the pressure was in his face. And he couldn't run. And. And it fell apart, and they lost the nope. game. And the, and the in-game adjustment is so important. No doubt. And that's and that's another hard part of being a head co- you know of being a head coach versus you know. I was going to say I think that's one of the things that like Lafleur really learned this year of being a first-time OC and first-time calling plays. Oh. I, and you know he even said like with the quarterback sneak and that whole mess. Oh. Uh, you know he even said like yeah, there's a lot. That I think and he listen, learned a lot. And too. that's what's happening. You're gonna you're gonna learn. You're gonna make mistakes. Yep. So, you know we're all just because of social media, yes. <laughs> which we all. All are on, and we all live by. Oh, yes. um, but but you know, it's very hard to. In the old days, you played on Sunday. If Joe threw five interceptions, then we okay Monday. And my dad used to go in on Tuesday to examine the players. He go, you know what? Everybody's over it by now, and you're on now. If a guy threw five interceptions, they oh th- gosh, oh he gets he's he's, he's for a week. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't they don't understand. Well, Tua did five in practice. I know, and they, 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 know, <laughs> they don't understand. That was just because you know, they threw the ball down the field. Now you do the little. A little jet sweep that's considered a touchdown pass, you oh, know, no, <laughs> and stuff. So it's again, it's very, it, it's it is, it's very different. But I think I'm very excited with, you know, I said what they're going to do. What they, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm praying they draft tight end. I'm, I want my tight end. Yep. I, I think I want, think the Trey McBride kid. I think he's going to yeah, be a jet. You know, and if we don't, you know, if he, if he happens to be gone, there, there are some other guys out here that can play. I really like Jeremy Ruckett as well. Uh, yes, I mean, New oh, Jersey. I mean, New York guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, bring him in. I, you know, JD was talking to him the other day at, uh, during practice. I was like, okay. I think, yeah, I think Dulcich has a chance in a lower yeah, round. I, I like so. him from UCLA. Yeah, he's he's a great he's kind of a converted a, wide receiver mm-hmm. type who. Yes, yeah. exactly. He's not your blo- big. He's not your blocker. And type. Real nice kid. I got to see him. He's got the great curly yeah, hair. Yeah, he is. Stuff. He's very nice. Yeah. yeah. So I think. Um you know, and there's there's just a lot of guys out there. Kohler from Iowa State. Yep. You know, there, there's just uh, it's it's a good year for 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 needing a tight end. And you we know, need at least two. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no question. Wide receiver. And we need a wide receiver one. Yep. And uh, um, and then you know, I would like a a. I'm a, I was so ecstatic when they got Michael Carter. 
Yes. I wanted him so badly. Most times I dream about different players that they're going to draft and they don't get that one. Right. It's just because of the way it works out. No, of course. But Michael Carter, I just screamed. Oh. Oh, I yeah. mean, I was so happy to get him to get him in the fourth in round. In the fourth round, too. Yeah, no kidding. Unbelievable. So, and I know he had the senior bowl. He was in the senior bowl last yep. year. Yep. So I was really happy with that. Then, of course, edge rusher. To, yep. we, we've been looking for one, you know. Not, since John it, Abraham it's left. Since John Abraham, and, yep. and we traded him away. But he could, <laughs> but. Um, you know, we really haven't had a real I think, speed I think guy. Carl Lawson comes back healthy. Yes. I think he's going to be a, a nice bookend. And then, you know, knock on wood, somebody falls to us. Even if we took the, the Carl Loftus kid out of Purdue. Yes. I, yeah. I think either one of those guys comes in and immediately. I want to. That's why the combine will be very interesting to see what they all, how they, what they do there. 100%. But I, uh, yeah, I'm anxious to see um, what. I know it's not a great year for, but there are some good edge rushers. But we we do have to do that, you know, go for that pretty much. Um, I liked our corners that we got last year. Yep. Just get one more corner. Yep. And we'll be we'll be set. But I now, like. Do you think? Because there's been a lot of speculation about, you know, do you go draft another guy, especially high, because a lot of people have talked about that. Or is this a thing where, like, Bryce Hall's played well, the other kids all played well, they all got scarred I'm, up, as Salah said. Yes. Now maybe go get a veteran. Maybe go get a Stephon Gilmore to step in and, and be the leader of that yes. group. Yeah, you know, where you have one, right, where you just have somebody, because we don't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of people that have been there for more. I mean, John Hennessy's our long snapper, and he's uh -huh. okay. And he's yeah. probably he's probably our real veteran that we have. Exactly. And of course, you have CJ who stepped up this yes. year. But other than that, we don't we don't have an enormous amount of of that middle the middle ground right uh, guy kind of guys that they used to have in the old days. That they were always your stability. Right. You had a few big guys, and you're, you're, but you always had that solid core guys that have been there five, six, seven years. It's why I really liked, you know, like them bringing in like Morgan Moses for the offensive line. I think that was a, I think that was a he, nice uh, veteran addition. That was really and good. And I really hope they can bring him back as well. And then yeah, then, he had a great attitude too, and I loved his interviews and what he had to say, and just the way he handled. You know, I, the Jets handled themselves so amazingly. Yeah. You know, yeah. even through the tough times. Yep. They were amazing in all their interviews. Um, and, and, you know, you saw that, like, other teams, you know, when the Dolphins were having their rough run and you started hearing sniping about, yes. oh, it's Tua, blah, 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 and all yes, of this factions. type of stuff. Right. But, you know, with this team, uh, you never heard a bad word about Zach Wilson. You never heard a bad nope. word about the defense or, you know, they just said, look, we got to be better. And, no. and I think they're all pointed in the right way. That's right. This is – so if I got a chance to talk to Sala, which won't happen, but <laughs> oh. had I had a chance to, the question I wanted to ask him more than anything, which is in the next five years when you're handing, they're handing you the Lombardi trophy for the first time. <laughs> yeah, right, you know, right. I love it. I love it. Uh, when, when Mr. Johnson's handing you the trophy oh, and you're man. holding it up over your head, what memory will flash through your head from this last season? Wow, yeah, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. That would be kind of uh, I would love maybe maybe he'll come by here. You never know. Hey, you know, if you, if you see him, just <laughs> I'm gonna, tell I'm gonna go tell I'm gonna tell him to <laughs> definitely. I say you gotta go over there. Yeah, no, yeah. He's, I think he'd enjoy talking to you. I really do. I oh, think I he would. It. I really think he yeah, would. I, it's, You're very it's, easy to talk with. Well I appreciate that very much. Honestly. Connie. And um so yeah, uh, okay, well let's let's talk about the Flores thing real quick and yeah. uh, tough just, tough situation. I thought the world to him. As yeah. I, I mean, I'm only looking for as an outsider. Yeah. You see him. I know he was from, from the Belichick tree, but he looked like the one. I never, like Joe, Joe Judge, I was never. No, it, that never. He never came off the same way. And it, most of them didn't. But Flores just seemed to be a real, just a real man and a yeah. real strong man. A man of just integrity and character. That's what, yeah. that's how he came across to me. Right. I mean, as I said, I have no idea what goes on behind the scenes. So now, and again, I think a lot of the flaws there was the staff. He brought a guy with him from the Patriots as an offensive coordinator. It didn't work out. Then they had to go basically dig up Chan Gailey uh, because Ryan Fitzpatrick liked him. But then Tua didn't know the playbook. And then last year at the Senior Bowl, they were having an open tryout for the offensive coordinator position between the two guys that shared the job because they didn't know what to do and they didn't have anybody else. He didn't have any other contacts. It's kind of what I was alluding to. Wow, so, so, I mean, and, and that's one of the things about, like, when he went out to go interview for other jobs, I thought, well, on the one hand, okay, if you go to a place that has a staff or has something in mind, but on the other hand, I don't know if he's going to get any of these jobs – now, of course, now, of course, we have all the allegations and all of oh, that. And, and all that crazy stuff. And, and know. you know, Stephen Ross came out today and, and really, you know, denied, denied it. He denied He denied all that. But I, and I don't know. I mean, I, we don't know the truth. No, but. We, we really don't know. But I, that those, you know, the thing with Belichick and doesn't make that look good, you know, nope. and, and the Giants. I said, I'm, that's why I'm very proud of the Jets' history. Absolutely. What, what, we, what we've done with women. 
and we didn't do it for that reason, you know, not not just to say that's why we're doing it. Absolutely. I said we then Herm Edwards comes in. Yep. Okay, and then we go to um, from Herm Edwards we go to Mangini, then we go to uh, to Rex, we, and then we have uh, then we have go to Todd Bowles. We yep. have. Uh, and then um, Adam Gaze, <laughs> and then we, and now and then we got Coach Salah. So <laughs> <skip that> <laughs> and, then, and then Coach Salah. But we, I said, I'm very proud of the way the Jets have, have done that, those kind and, of things. And it's been, it's never been a thing. Like no. you've never heard about the Jets. You know, like no. oh, well, they need to do this. Or no, they want to hire not a minority. It's never been even even an issue. I mean, no. it, it's just kind of been like, hey, this is what we do, and and just like that's what I mean. Having female it, scouts and all that just. It is I, honestly they don't they don't make this big issue of it and I, I like the way that I really like that very much I give them so much credit for that you know people don't give the just credit for a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will give them I definitely will and that's one of the things I would say about being a Jets fan is that you know you don't you don't get to be pretentious you don't get to be the Cowboys or the Giants and think that you're all that great right no. because you've had to struggle you've had all the tough times and you started it from such the humble beginnings of the AFL and all of that I feel like it's just something that that, you know, you you're humbled, and so you just you're just going out there. You're going to work hard and do the best you can, yes. and, and all of that. And and your fan base expects nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I know we we're but I'll tell you, they're the most loyal. I want you know, Twitter, Jets Twitter, and all the different things um, on all the different social media platforms. Really, I love Jet fans, and they've yep. really been good. Um, they care so much, yeah. and um, I, I'm, I'm always I'm always be a fan. They've been they've been awesome to me, through, you know, through the years and stuff like that. So I I have again I I've had really good experience. Every once in a while you get something, but anybody in the world is going to get that. Oh, of so course. what's the, what's the big deal? And it's so funny to me because, you know, I've, I've traveled, I've been to Jets games in all kinds of different cities, and and you have like Saints fans are so passionate about their yes. team. Yes. And you know they're they're just great and loyal fans. Broncos fans are really really nice, and they're always just like even if they like they see you in your Jets gear, they'll always be like, "We're gonna beat you, but have a great time. Thanks for being here." Isn't that amazing? Every place is different. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, of course, I'm not going to Philly or Oakland yeah, or anything know, like that. Right? Like, I'm not doing that. No, I know. But uh, but you know, you go to, like when you watch a Jets game. Like we have a bar in in Dallas that we all would go to, and we yes. all sit around and, and watch a Jets game. And of course, other people that come in there kind. To get razzed, uh, but it's always in like it's never really mean spirited. It's yeah. usually in fun, and uh, you know it's Jersey guys, so it's a lot of cursing. But <laughs> but I they're always, a unique group. I'm a Jersey guy exactly. <laughs> but I always say, you know what? But it's it's all in fun, and it, and it, it that's why I like. But that's why sports are great. We can you know you you're in, if you're in Dallas and you're in New York and you're in New Jersey and you're I'm in I'm in Florida, wherever you may be, and you have your teams, and we wear our stuff and we love it. But we don't dislike the person because of what they do. We we have fun with it. We tease each other, and that's why I think sports are can be very unifying. And that's why when something comes out or what whatever is happening right now, and I hope it gets rectified. I hope for Coach Flores to say, because I said I think you know he's an old school guy, yeah. and, and that's what I love old school people. I can't help it. That's just the way I am. Uh, absolutely. But you know, I think that that old school method, you know, and, and what I always refer to as the red ass coach. <laughs> You know, Parcells was a great red ass uh -huh. coach, and, and uh, I know great story about Parcells. So we got to uh, interview a former Cowboys safety, Keith uh, Keith Jackson, and he was telling us. So he had been in an incident where he was at a nightclub and he got shot. Uh huh. And so he recovered and he was fine, and he was coming back. And before he's going to walk into the locker room, Parcells stops him outside the locker room, and he says, "Are you okay? Everything good? You you feel okay?" And he goes, "He goes, yes, sir, I'm good." And he says, "Okay, I'm gonna go in there and rip your rip your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so just just know, but I care about you and I want you to be okay." And he's like, "Okay, thanks, coach." And he goes in there and he's just like, "This <laughs> man, 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 is that and this is why you don't go out to clubs and look at this idiot and blah 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 and and totally did it, but." But Parcells was actually the person already knew it. Yeah, he had he had a knack of of doing that kind of stuff. Even though I have a, I had a harder time with Parcells only because he was a giant. Yeah. And he still is a giant through He'll and through. He'll always a be great, a giant, right? A, a, you could be a great coach, and, and he is a great coach. Yep. But as far as for me, for me, I never felt even though he, he won one with the Jets. He, I, I had. Say, I, if he'd won it in '98, I still, you still, I still. It, it was like when we brought Jason Taylor to the Jets. No uh, matter what, he could never a be dolphin. a Jet. Absolutely. See, I, it could never be a Jet. It, it just didn't work. So for me, I'm, I'm old school in that respect too. But you know, at any time we took. We took giant. If we took I, when we took Cotite, we took Joe Walton. They were all giants. And see, yep. I'm, I'm from the and, and so I, I, people of today's ilk um, don't 
know how when we grew up the NFL looked down upon the AFL. They looked yeah. down their oh, nose really badly. And we were second-class citizens. Yep. And they laughed at us. And our wide-open football. How stupid throwing the ball all the right. time. And, you know, Keith Lincoln and John Hadle and, oh, yeah. and Daryl LaMonica and you name it. So, they, But they looked down their nose. So when Super Bowl three comes and yep. we cemented Joe Namath, people don't understand and how he, and the, he cemented it. But after the Super Bowl, we played the Giants in the Yale Bowl. And it was a preseason game. No, oh, amazing. Okay. But if you talk to any of the Jets, including Namath, that game to them was equally as important as the Super Bowl. Wow. Because we're playing against, and we creamed, and we creamed, <laughs> the, Gi- we creamed the Giants, and Ali Sherman gets fired after it from the wow, Giants. Wow, really? And so we now own New York. That was, you know, when, when the teams were both in New yep. York. And they, we, we owned all of New York. Being the, but so I understand, like, after that, it became the Dolphins in the 80s. It yep. became the big one. Yep. And then, of course, because of Brady and Belichick, yep. it became the Patriots. But it was in inside of me because when you're young, those things stay with you. Yeah. It was always the, the hatred of the Giants. Interesting. So that's why I had a harder time. And it was, and, was, and same thing, even though, as I said, Parcells was a great coach. There's no yeah. question. I was going to say, it's been a great week for the Jets because they've been here. Brady retires. It's <laughs> <laughs> It is amazing. I mean, look, the, I, I will say, like, I, I feel the same way about Brady as I felt about John Elway, which is he's, look, there was no question he's an incredible quarterback, and obviously, you know, at the time, Elway might have been one of the greatest, and now yes. Brady's definitely the greatest and all of that, but, man, I hated that guy. Oh, I do. When he was, well, when he was Patriots, I, hate, I always respected him. Oh, yes, exactly. And what he's, what the way his, I think he's probably the greatest competitor I've ever oh, seen, and, and what he's done is just totally amazing. But once he went to Tampa Bay, then I could root for him and enjoy, and enjoy him because that's the NFC. No, I still couldn't root for him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're so funny. It was ingrained. Because I, I just, I'm, I get mad at Belichick because he left us. Well, that's true. Yeah. See, so I, you know, you know, it's so funny the little, little things inside of you that you can't help it. You know, and, and then it, the Spygate thing and all of that mess and and just, oh, it's, it, it's been fun and and that's the thing about all of it. I think is, it is. As you said, it's it's. It's supposed to be the respite. I hate when you know you have politics that bleed into your yeah, sports. Yeah, I do too. Because it was always the escape, and and you could go to it and enjoy enjoy it for three, four hours, exactly. and, and just. Uh, and I understand, like you know, it's a platform, and, and I do. all of that. Like I, I, I understand it, but I. I don't want that to take away from the game. Like nope. if you want to do that, that's fine. But do that on your own. Like, let, let's keep the game sacred as it is and and yep. i'm not saying you know like like nope. i said you want to you want to put a message on your shoes or whatever cool i don't care i i know I, I agree with you completely on that I, same thing and the other person is like like roger goodell you know he was an intern with the jets he that's how he started uh-huh. out okay yep. but what i want to say i want to give him a little bit of kudos too because you know he always that doesn't he, happen often no, never on the show because he always gets, you know he, he gets booed the moment he comes out and, yep. he, and he laughs about it and oh, everything yeah. but yeah the, the way he got through covid with the nfl that, these two seasons and working, you know, with Dr. Sills and yep. all the different people that they've worked with, yep. the NFL was the leader. Yep. With that many people, it's not like you have 15 way, people. Yeah, the way they did the draft that year and just oh, the, last the way minute, he, like, he he didn't pivoted. he didn't say I'm, and he's I'm in not going to. Oh, it was <laughs> unbelievable. You know, we got to be in the little window. I yeah. got to be in the window oh, for the second awesome. round. Do the second round. That's amazing. <laughs> I was the Mims round. Yes, well, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll give him a chance. Yeah, hopefully. So, but I wanted to say that about you know. Commissioner Goodell, because, um, you know, he, he did a fantastic job of, of somehow maneuvering these past two years when we, and leading the way for other yes. leagues to follow, figure things out, somehow get through this whole thing, Man. With it, which we couldn't have, I don't know what I would have done with my life without it, <laughs> other than my grandkids. But <laughs> right. That is a good point. Yeah. I, I, you know, and, and I think that that's really like, it's become such an institution, like you said. It's 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 what it's all about. Like it's what the fall is. It's what our you know the oh. whole kind of calendar is built around. And, yes. and now, obviously, being here in Mobile is is part of it. And the draft, and and then free agency we've got coming up. Coming so. up. Yeah, it's almost it's all year round. Which is thank goodness. At least we have some stuff coming up. And and 100%. you know, once the season ends, then you put on YouTube, and it's that's all I'm doing all day. Is you know, exactly. at night and all night watching YouTube stuff. And yeah. and the way the Jets have done their website now, and they have all like the the, the one oh. Jets drive stuff that's been. I, I, Great job on the, with all with all that, all the interviews and yeah. Uh, it's as I said, there's so many so many ways to get it, even when you're living far away. Exactly. And then Twitter keeps me up with uh, all the beat writers. Right. And because I, you know, got to know them in Cortland when we were at Cortland with, with in Rex Ryan's, t- he went away for training camp. Yeah. 
and so I got to get to know all of them really well. And so it was, it's been great. I really enjoyed that. Those were fun days there too. So it's been, even though I've been away from it, I, I still feel a part of it for, and the Jets treat me, as I said, so well. Joe, oh, yeah. D- Joe Douglas, Woody Johnson, yes. Chris Johnson. Um, I just met Coach Sala really because we couldn't get close to me right, my right. Tony's during training camp. But those guys have been just treated me like you, and all the Jets scouts. Yeah. Um, Anthony Beck, I know, is doing some yeah, stuff. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, and all the former Jets. We have a Legends weekend where a lot of former Jets get together. Oh, that's amazing. Get to see all those guys. And so we all stay in touch. For that's good. That, that 80s team was oh, yeah. very, very close together. The, you know, the, the Freeman McNeils and the Wesleys. Yeah, and, yep. the, and then I heard, and I said, Richard Todd is coming in. Yeah, I, I, I heard I wa- that. I, I really hope to see Richard. I haven't seen him in a long time. That would be amazing. Great, great person. Yeah, I heard he's coming in for the game. I think he's supposed to be here tomorrow. So. Oh, so that'll be real. I'm very excited. I, I, I am too. I yeah. Be <laughs> see, see, see. I know all the Jets fans. We actually had uh, the biggest celebrity we've had thus far is we had Fireman Ed come to the bar when oh. the Jets came to Dallas. Isn't that crazy? And he came to the bar and did the, did the whole thing. And, oh, yeah. I do love it. I, 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 I didn't like it when he switched. Not because I don't like Mark Sanchez, because I love Mark, and I think he's doing a fantastic job um, You know, with Fox. Right, right. I, I'm, so, I'm so proud of him. Yeah. I really am. But when he always wore 42, he wore yep. our Brucey, I'm sorry, yeah, 42, he wore Brucey Harper. And then yep. he switched, and then things kind of got out of yep. But I'm so glad that he, that it's back. Yes. That, I'm glad he's back, you know, because he had the whole thing with the new stadium. and I know. And that whole rigmarole. Oh, no, I'm so glad, too. And the cheer, you know, it's, it, there's nothing like that. There's now, nothing like it. Now we, got, we have to get all the fans back, you know, because it's happening in every stadium, as, as you saw what happened with the in yeah, LA. I went to the I went to the Bills game this year, the Jets Bills there, right around uh, right before. There Thanksgiving. were a lot of Jet fans, I heard. Yeah, there was a lot of Jet fans, but a lot of Bills fans. And what's funny is, so we're there, and it's so cold. <sighs> and you know, of course, it's it's just me and, and Jess, and and we're, we've got our we've got our I've got my Jet Jeff yeah. jersey on, and she has her Jet Jess jersey on, and, <laughs> and we're bundled up, and we're just like, oh my gosh, we're just a couple of weak Texas people, right? <laughs> But I saw Bills fans with like blankets on and all this, and I was like, okay, okay I don't then, feel then so you're bad. okay. So I'm not. legit. Like <laughs> it, it actually is cold. That's, that's so gr- that's so great. It is it's, it is wonderful. And uh, I, as I said, I, I have been blessed my whole life. Uh, my, my brother worked for the Bills for many years, um, Bruce Nicholas. Yeah, you said that. And yeah. um, so I said we and we he was in the scouting department with Norm Pollum. And while I was working with the Jets, but we didn't speak during draft time because <laughs> <laughs> like, we never wanted to ever be accused of anything. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so we, uh, now we can. He's not where he, he just retired from Rydell, but oh, good. But but we um, we had, we'd all, we always talk football, and he's and uh, you know because he was a scout and he oh, did yeah. all that too. So yeah, it was, it's been a great. I've as I said, I've had a great life, and the Jets have given me. So much, and now so we much. need to get you one more Super Bowl, right? Would, would that be amazing? Uh, Wouldn't that be awesome? Would, okay, so uh, do you have a stash of money that's set aside for a Super Bowl ticket if they make it? Oh no, I don't have to even have a stash. All my money will go to it. <laughs> Just cash it out. Just go. Yes, yeah, yeah. like some that's what I that's what I told Jess too. I said I was like, you know, if the Jets go to the Super Bowl, what? like I'm I'm cashing in like 401k. Yeah, it's no, like, this is right. happening. Oh, can you imagine that stadium? Oh, uh, I'm gonna be there. I mean, I saw a, a thing on the on was on Twitter or something and they showed all the prices oh, of all I the know, seats I for the for the dollars <laughs> I said, okay now, but granted, it's, it's a home game if it's, it's LA you know. if it's the Jets I'll, that's no problem <laughs> <laughs> that is the correct answer <laughs> all right well on that note I think we are done Connie thank okay. you so oh thank much. you for all that time I it was all right oh, oh, no, you're so perfect. easy to talk to well, I appreciate I it. Hope. Connie Carberg please go check out your book which is X's and O's don't mean I love you and it's on Amazon. In, uh, I hope you enjoy it by Elizabeth Meineke. Excellent. Uh oh, I think our camera's froze. All right, well. Okay. We had a great time. Oh, Thank we you did. So much, uh, it was a pleasure. Thank All you. Right.